In this screencast I'll show you how to use Excel to implement the error equation for a standard series calibration. So here we have the error equation with all of the different terms that go into that with some explanation of what they are down here. One of these is the standard error of the Y estimate. If we just move over here we can see that explained in a little bit more detail. The standard error of the y estimate, the sy of x, is the square root of the sum of the residual squared divided by the number of calibration points minus 2. And the residual is the difference between a y data point and the line of best fit. So to show you how this gets implemented, I've got uh, some xy data here, some calibration data, and we've also got this statement that the unknown sample gave a response of 4.18 from one reading. And the first thing that we have to do to start working through this is we need the value of M and C. So we need the, the gradient and the intercept for the line of best fit. So we can get these by using equals slope. Open brackets will highlight that Y data, X data close the bracket, press enter. Then we can get the intercept as well using the intercept function. The next step here is to fill in this table. The first column is Y calc. So what is the Y value given by the line of best fit? So we can simply do equals M times X plus C and that gives us the first value there. If we put some dollar signs in here, when we fill down, we'll point to the right cells. So we can then fill down, and for some reason that has not worked. Okay, it's because I put the dollar signs in the wrong place. It should have gone in front of the numbers. And let's try that again. Okay, it's worked that time. So we can see each of those is pointing to the right X value and also to the M and the C. Okay, the next one's a little bit simpler. We simply take the Y value minus the Y calc. For the residual squared, we just say equals the cell that we're interested in to the power of two. We can fill down there as well. Now we're going to need the total of this column later on. So here we go, we'll get the sum of that column there. Okay, then the next column that we see is x minus x mean squared. So here we have to take the x value minus the mean value that I've already got in there to the power of 2. And again, if we use a dollar sign, we can just copy this down and each time we're taking the, the particular x value for that line minus the mean and squaring it. And again we need the total for that column in a moment. Okay, so if we just come down here, we've got the mean value of x just by simply taking the average of that column. We've done the same for y because we'll need that to implement the error equation later on and then we come to the next bit. So we need the sum of the residual squared and that is simply that total there. To get sy of x we've got an equation. We have to say equals the square root of the sum of the residual squared divided by the number of calibration points which was 5 minus 2 and press enter. So now we've got our sy of x. The sum of each individual x value minus the mean x value squared is given to us by the total of this column. And now we're starting to build up the information that we need to be able to do this calculation. To get the unknown concentration, we have to take y0 minus c divided by M. That gives us the unknown concentration. 
and then we've now got all of the right information to go into this equation here to get the s to get the standard error of x naught and so what we have to do is use the right combination of brackets and pointing to the right cells to be able to implement all of this and if you do it in the right way you should get the value of 0 0.075 millimolar and we can take this one step further as well and we can say if we multiply that value by a t value we can get the t value by going t in for the 95% confidence level we need a probability of 0 0.05 and the degrees of freedom were given to us um, are given to us by n minus 2 in this situation so that would be 5 minus 2 we've got 5 data points but there are two constraints in this situation we've calculated all these subsequent numbers based on the fact that we've got a value for the intercept and the slope and they came from our five free values so we've got five independent sets of values and then we've got two constraints so degrees of freedom in this case is three and there we have the 95% confidence interval so we've got 95% certainty that the true value is within that range so 1.98 millimolar plus or minus 0.24 millimolar okay there is a slightly shorter hand way of doing this and we can use the Linest equation for that so what we have to do is type equals Linest open brackets I like that Y data I like the X data press comma and we're going to say true to get the intercepts calculated normally and we're going to say true again to get some additional statistical parameters so we highlight all of those values because this is an array function press F2 control shift and enter and this is going to save us a little bit of time because we've got information like S Y of X now so um, again we need the mean value of Y to be able to get the sum of each individual x value minus x mean squared there is a bit of a shortcut here now the value of s slope equals s y of x divided by the square root of the sum of each individual x value minus x mean squared so that's the term that we need in there and we can rearrange this whole equation so the term that we want the sum of these x values minus x mean squared in fact equals s y of x divided by s slope squared so we could, we've got a bit of a shortcut here we can simply say equals s y of x divided by s slope squared and there we have the same value that we got before from the longhand method again we, we can calculate the concentration by saying y naught minus c divided by m and as you'd expect as before if you get all of these values and put them in to that full error equation in the correct manner you should get 0 0.075 but I'm going to leave you to figure that part out because I've shown you all of the other elements that need to come into this okay so just finally, if you'd like some more information about errors in calibration methods, then you can refer to Miller & Miller Statistics and Chemometrics for Analytical Chemistry.